Hey guys, we are moving on from trigonometry. You can all say yay in your heads. Um, I think it's going to be hard to continue to do lessons via distance learning without me in the classroom for some of these trigonometry lessons. So we are going to go ahead and move on to vectors, which I think you will like better, but we will see. So a vector is just a quantity that has a length, which is also called the magnitude, and direction. You've probably seen these in physics before um, or a science class. And what we are going to do with them for this first IXL is write vectors in what's called the component form. So component form shows how a vector has changed horizontally and vertically from the initial point to the terminal point. So the first part of this is an arrow, like a bracket, and it's going to represent the horizontal change. So if I'm changing something horizontally, that's going to be from left to right, which would affect my axis. So up here, I showed you a picture of what my initial point and terminal point would look like. Okay, it's like a ray. My initial point on this example is at the origin, and then my terminal point is out here in quadrant one. So what I would do to find the horizontal change is just subtract your terminal x from your initial x. So this formula would be your terminal x minus your initial x. Then I'm going to switch over and do the vertical change. So same thing, if I want to find how the vector has changed vertically, that would affect my y's, okay, how far up or down it has gone. So I would subtract my terminal y from my initial y. And that would give me my component form. Okay, do not flip out if you're at this point and you're like, I have no idea what she's talking about. Let's do some of these IXL examples and I think um, it'll make more sense when we actually plug in some numbers. Okay, so here's your first example. It says, write the vector in component form. So I need to find the horizontal change and the vertical change of this vector. Well, just looking at it, we know that the initial point is at zero, zero and the terminal point would be at six, six. So zero, zero, and six, six. If I wanted to find the horizontal change, I just need to subtract my terminal X from my initial X. So my horizontal change would be six minus zero, which would just equal six. And then my vertical change, I would subtract the Y's. So terminal Y minus initial Y, which happens to be six minus zero again. So we would get six, six. So my final answer for my component form would be six, six. Um, on these, it's sometimes easier just to look at the picture and not even worry about the coordinates because I can tell that this vector started at zero, zero. It moved horizontally six units to the right, which creates my six for my horizontal change. And then it went up six, which created the six for my vertical change. So if you just wanna look at the picture, you could tell, well, it went six right and six up. So that creates my six, six for my component form. Okay, next example. This vector starts at zero, and then it goes right nine and down seven. So if you don't even wanna use your coordinates, let's just look at the horizontal and vertical change. So horizontally, I know that this went right nine units. So that would be my horizontal change. So down here, my first part of that component form would be nine. And then this time, instead of going up, it's moving down. So I went down seven for the vertical change. 
So if you're moving down, it's going to be negative. So my y component would be negative 7. So this answer would just be 9, negative 7 for this vector in component form. For this vector, it never gets off the x-axis. So the initial point's at 0, 0, but the terminal point is at 7, 0. So my horizontal change would be 7 units to the right because I moved 7 units in the right direction. But I haven't moved up or down any, so I don't have any vertical change. It's just stayed at 0. So my horizontal would be 7, but my vertical change would just be zero. Okay, next problem. We need to do the exact same thing. This time my vector has moved left and up. So for the horizontal change, I went seven units to the left, which would mean it's negative seven because I went seven to the left. So my first answer would be negative seven. And then the vertical change, we can tell that this vector moved up 9 units. And since I'm moving up on the y-axis, that would be positive. So my answer would be negative 7 for horizontal and positive 9 for vertical. For this example, we get a little bit harder because they take away your graph from you. And you just have to use your coordinates. So... Looking at this problem, if you wanted to get a visual, you could just sketch a little graph. I know that B would be the initial point because that's the first letter in this like vector. So B would be at negative 4, negative 10. So maybe somewhere down here. And that's my initial point. And then my terminal point would be C at negative 10, 0. So somewhere over here, and this would be my vector. So this time it doesn't start at 0, 0 and it's harder just to do like well, what would the vertical change or the horizontal change be. So let's go ahead and use our coordinates like what we did at the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and label these um, with my x initial, y initial, and then x terminal, y terminal. So to find the horizontal change, we need to subtract the x's. So I would do my terminal x minus my initial x. So I would have negative 10 minus negative 4. Negative 10 minus negative 4 is really negative 10 plus 4. So that would give me an answer of negative 6 for the horizontal change. Okay, moving on to the vertical change. I need to subtract my y coordinates. So start with the terminal and subtract the initial. So this would be 0 minus negative 10. And 0 minus negative 10 is really 0 plus 10. So this would create a vertical change of positive 10. So up here, don't get confused by this i and j. Those variables just represent the horizontal and vertical change. You're still going to type in the exact same answers like we have been before. So negative 6 would go along with i for your horizontal. And 10 would be your answer for the vertical change for j. Alright, we finally made it to the last problem. And we get a graph back. Yay! but this vector does not start at the origin. So just be very careful about where your initial point is. I can tell that my initial point starts at four, negative four, and it ends at two, zero. So for the horizontal change, this vector has actually moved left two, which means it would be negative two. Okay, just like an x-axis, if I'm going left, it's negative. If I'm going right, it's positive. Then for the vertical change, this vector moved up 4 units. So my vertical change would be 4. Okay, just like the x-axis, going up is positive, going down is negative. If you wanted to, you could still use the coordinates if you just want to check yourself. So to get the horizontal change, just subtract your terminal x from your initial x. 
So my terminal X is two, and my initial X was at four. So two minus four would be negative two, which is what we got. And the vertical change, I would take my terminal Y, which was at zero, and subtract my initial Y, which was at negative four. So zero minus negative four is really positive four. So we end up getting the exact same answer as what we got originally. All right, hope you guys have a great week. If you need any help, please feel free to call or text me anytime. Talk to you later.